Hey, Flip Geometry, how are you doing? We're going to jump into the next chapter here, 6.2, the characteristics of parallelograms. So we're going to get into parallelograms specifically with a little more detail. Here we go. The first thing we're going to do is build a theorem based on the idea that uh, if you take two consecutive angles of a parallelogram, that those two angles are going to add up 280 degrees. Remember that the sum of all the angles inside a parallelogram is 360. And because of the way that the parallelogram is put together, that means that if you take two angles that are consecutive and you add them up, that equals 180. We're rough, roughly half of the 360 of the whole thing, right? 364 of the angles, two of those angles, add up 280. And because of the way the parallelogram is, um, these two will always be supplementary, okay? So angle A and angle D would be supplementary. Angle A and angle B would be supplementary, et cetera, all right? Um, the next theorem we're going to look at is that opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And this figure, again, helps you with this. So um, angle D and angle B, opposite angles, they are congruent. Angle A and angle C, opposite angles, they are congruent. That is always the case in a parallelogram. Another uh, corollary that falls out of that is that if a parallelogram has one right angle, then it has to have four right angles, and it is, in fact, a rectangle. Let's look at why that is. Um, if angle D were 90 degrees, then angle B would have to be 90 degrees because the opposite angles are congruent. And if angle D is 90 degrees, then angle A also has to be 90 degrees because uh, adjacent angles, consecutive angles, are supplementary. And that means that angle A and angle C would both have to be 90 degrees because opposite angles are congruent. So if it has one 90-degree angle, it has, in fact, four 90-degree angles, and it's a rectangle. Just like opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So in parallelogram ABCD, segment BC and segment AD are congruent. They are congruent and they are parallel. Um, and you could demonstrate that if you wanted to um, by starting with the fact that they're parallel, and then that means that angle 2 and angle 3 have to be congruent uh, because of alternate interior angles. That, and you could say that the, uh, the auxiliary line BD is itself because of the reflexive property. And then you could also look at angle one and angle four as being congruent to each other because of alternate interior angles if these two sides are congruent. That means that we have angle side angle. These two triangles are congruent triangles. And that means that these sides are congruent because of corresponding parts. And these sides are congruent because of corresponding parts. So opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. All right, that's a, a theorem as well. Um, another one, diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. This is kind of an interesting thing that you will use in some proofs as well. If you draw diagonals, uh, we said yesterday that the diagonals of a parallelogram meet at a right angle. Um, it's also true that they meet um, that, that they bisect each other. So AE has to be congruent to EC, and BE has to be congruent to ED. Okay, And these are all things that we'll get to play with here in a little bit. Let's do some examples. Find each measure in ABCD if BD is equal to 11.6 meters and measure of ABC is 72 degrees. So we have, uh, we have this figure here, and we want to find the measure of DC, EC, and ED. And so using this figure, um, DB, sorry, DC, this guy here, has to be congruent to AB. And if we know that this is 6.3, then this is also 6.3, all right? EC is congruent to EA, EC is congruent to EA. And if this is 4.2, then this also has to be 4.2, okay? And um, ED, is half of BD, ED is half of BD. And so if we know that BD is 11.6, this whole thing is 11.6, then half of that is going to be 5.8. So um, we can do the similar sorts of things with measure angles, angles of measures, angle, measures of angles, angles, you know what I mean. <laughs> we can do the same thing with the angles. Um, so we want to find out the measure of DAB, D. A, B, and we know that um, it has to be the same as this side over here, right? Um, a, B, C is 72, 
72 and this one need to be supplementary. So what's the supplement of 72? That'd be 108 degrees, right? Um, measure of ADC. ADC has to be the same as this side over here because opposite sides are congruent. So if this is 72, then that is also 72. And the last one, measure of angle D, A, C. This angle here um, is the same as this angle here. And if we know that this was 108, this also is 108. 108 minus 63 is going to give me what I'm looking for. And that would be 45 degrees. Okay. We'll go through these examples and a couple of others in class. We've got um, another uh, example here. If we're going to say that opposite sides are congruent, and we could use some algebra just to make it fun. 7a plus 13a equals 180. Um, the angles here have to be congruent. And so I could solve for a, and I could say that a is 9. Um, measure of angle j, I want to know how big is this. And this is 7a. Um, and so I can plug that back in. 7 times 9 is 63 degrees. It means that measure j is 63. And because measure m has to be supplementary, I could just subtract from 180, or I could put 9 back in. 13 times 9 is 117. Okay. A measure of angle L is the same as the measure of angle J. That's 63. And the measure of K is the same as the measure of angle M, which would also be 117. Let's look at uh, the sides here. X plus, equals 2Y plus 1. And then 2x equals 5y minus 2. So I can plug the, I can substitute and solve here for y and find out that y equals 4. And then I can plug 4 back in and find out that x equals 9. And so those are the dimensions of my parallelogram. Uh, par parallelograms are actually really fun to play with. And uh, again, we're going to get a lot of practice of these in class. Plugging 9 in, I can find out that JK and ML are both 9 because that's X. And then 2X, I can tell you that JM and KL are both 2 times 9, which is 18. Sorry, my picture's in the way. Um, last theorem that we're going to uh, display to you here today is the congruent division of transversals theorem. This is kind of an interesting thing. If I have two or more parallel lines, actually I guess it has to be three or more parallel lines, and I cut the three or more parallel lines with a transversal, and I discover that all the segments of my transversal are congruent. That means that these parallel lines are evenly spaced. If that is the case, if it divides any transversal into congruent segments, it will divide all transversals into congruent segments. So um, if you have parallel lines spaced evenly, no matter how you cut them, no matter what angle your transversal comes at them, as long as it's a transversal and not a parallel line, it will be cut into congruent segments by all of the parallel lines. Kind of an interesting thing. So um, that's the last uh, proof or the last theorem for the day. If you have any questions, we'll deal with them in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I.